we are going to look at what I'm going to call the classic tide problem uh, today. So uh, what we have is um, water at the end of a pier uh, is subject to the tides. So today at 4.15 a.m., you have a high tide of 5.2 meters and you have a low tide of uh, at 1227 of two meters. So we're going to do three things. First, we're going to find a trigonometric equation that models the depth of the water T hours after midnight. Uh, and it says round values to the nearest uh, one thousandth. I'm actually going to do exact value until we get to the final answers. Um, then uh, find the depth of the water at noon and then find out when after noon uh, the water is three meters deep in the afternoon. So uh, let's start by, I'm just going to do a couple of quick things here. Um, draw kind of an X and a Y coordinate system here. And then I will put a point right up here. Let's call that 5.2 meters at 4.15. But 4.15 is really 4.25. 15 minutes divided by 60 minutes gives you 0.25. And then we have a depth of 2 meters at right here, which is 11, is 11.27? No, 10.27, which is 10.45. Okay, so this is going to be a really horrible sketch, and I'm going to clean it up in a little bit, but it's going to go down, and then it's going to go up, and then it's going to go down, and then it's going to go up. So we need to find a trig equation uh, to help us figure this out. So uh, I'm going to use cosine. We're going to start here where it's sine. So the phase shift, I'm just going to start labeling stuff here. Phase shift is going to be 4.25 hours. The period... The difference between high tide and low tide, 10.45 minus 4.25, that's 6.2, but that's halfway, so we're going to multiply that by 2, so the period is going to be 12.4. So we have a period, we have a phase shift. Now let's start looking at amplitude and center line. So the center line is going to be halfway between 5.2 and 2. So y will be 5.2 plus 2 divided by 2, which is 7.2 divided by 2, which is 3.6. So that's 3.6. And then the amplitude, how far do you go from 3.6 up to 5.2 and 3.6? down to 2, amplitude is going to be 5.2 minus 2, the difference, divided by 2, which is going to be 1.6. Okay, we have our amplitude, we have the period, b is equal to 2 pi over the period, which is going to be pi over 6.2, that's b, and then I'll do this in blue, phase shift is going to be negative c over the absolute value of b. So phase shift is 4.25 is equal to negative c over b, and b is pi over 6.2. So c is going to equal 4.25 times pi divided by 6.2. Okay, so let's go to the highlighter, and I'm going to highlight in green. So we have y, or depth at any given time, is going to be 1.6, which is the amplitude, times cosine pi over 6.2t, minus this whole thing, and I didn't carry that minus sign down, I forget about that, so it's minus 4.25 pi over 6.2, close parent, and then your um, vertical shift is 3.6. So if you look, d of t, 1.6, which was our amplitude, cosine, 
v is pi over 6.2 t minus 4.25 pi over 6.2 all plus 3.6. So all of these numbers came from these rough calculations here. So we got part A. And you know what? Let's go ahead and let's make sure that this works. So to make sure it works, we're going to pull up the calculator. And we will put this equation into the calculator. 1.6 cosine and then in parentheses pi divided by 6.2 times t, and I don't have a t, so I'm going to use x, minus, in parentheses, 4.25 pi divided by 6.2, close all the parentheses, plus 3.6. Now, we're going to graph this. Uh, and actually, this blue graph that I have here came from the calculator. But to graph it, let's look at what the window needs to be. Uh, time is going to be from midnight to 24 hours later, which will be midnight the next day. And then y, which is the depth of the water, it's between 2 and 5.2. So let's do uh, between 0 and 10. Okay, so we've set up the window. We're going to do the graph. And as the graph comes up, it should look a lot like the big graph that we have over here. Uh, Lord willing, it will. And just to make sure that we did it right, I'm going to uh, put in 4.25. We should get out a depth of 5.2. And then I'll put in uh, 10.45, and we should get out a depth of 2. And I, I'm going to do it two different ways. First, I'm going to go to Calculate. Calculate a value, and for x, I'm going to put in 4.25. We should expect to see 5.2, and we get that. Then I'm going to quit out of this, clear that, and I'll go to alpha f4, pick y1, and then in parentheses, 10.45, and that should give us 2. Okay, so we have the equation in the calculator. We have verified that it works. So how do we find the depth of the water at noon? Kind of straightforward. So finding the depth at 12 is really very straightforward. We just go into our calculator and we find y1 at 12. And that gives us a depth of 2.469 meters at noon. So that's kind of straightforward. Let's talk about what happens when uh, we need to go to the next step. So a large boat needs at least 3 meters of water to moor at the end of the pier. During what period after noon uh, can the boat safely moor? So let's, let's just label some numbers. This is 4.25, and this is 10.45. Those are the numbers that we were given. Now, what I'm going to do is divide this cosine wave up into the four quadrants, and that's these green dotted lines are for the quadrants, the red lines, this is 5.2, 2, and 3.6, which would be minimum, maximum, and then our center line. So we have these two points, which were given, and then we have these other points that I'm making that divide this into the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and then the fourth quadrant. So each quadrant is the same. There's a um, concept of reflection and so forth. So remember it was 6.2 hours between high tide and low tide. So that means 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1, 3.1. So 
if we add uh, 6.2 to 10, 0.45, this comes out at 16 because we've added 6 and 0 0.2, 16.65 or uh, 1600 is 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So that's when high tide is. And it's going to be back up to 3.6 feet here at 10.45 plus 31. So that's 13.55. So, uh, and I guess we could come over here and 4.25 plus 3.145. That's 7.5. 3, 5 hours. So now we have all of the quadrants divided up. We need to figure out where, let's put a little dotted line in here, and I'm going to put a black line in here at 3. So what we really need to figure out is we need to find this time and this time. Those are the two dots that we need to fill in. Once we find these two times, that will tell us um, when we have uh, three feet under the keel and so forth. And uh, just looking at it, let's pull up our calculator. And this is the easiest way to do it with your calculator. If you just go into Y and down at Y2, put in 3, graph that, and you see that red line appears. And we need to find the intersection in these two points. So we can just go to second, calculate, and we want intersect, which is 5. And then we just get close, curve 1, estimate curve 2, and then estimating the intersection here. So this is at 12.79. And then let's do the same thing to calculate the intersection on the second side. So we'll just scroll over. And sometimes the computer acts weird here, so we'll see. Uh, what happens. And I'm just going to show you, you don't even have to be very close. And that gives you an intersection down here at 20.5. Okay, 20.5, that's going to be 20 hours and 30 minutes. So let's quit out of this and we have 0.79 times 60. That's 47 minutes, so this is actually at 12.47, and this is at 20.30, or 8.30 p.m. Okay, so I want to talk just a little bit about some other stuff that's going on here. If you were to take this equation up top, and solve for t. It would be 3 is equal to 1.6 cosine, all of this stuff, plus 3.6. And if you got all the way down and you went and you solved it, you would get t give you 8.1. Well, 8.1 happens right here. And the reason that 8.1 happens here is you have to use an inverse cosine. And the inverse cosine will give you an answer in the first or second quadrant. And the answer is in the second quadrant. So with this 8.2, to reflect that over here, 8.2, how far is that from 10.45? You'd reflect it across here. I'm going to do, I think, a whole separate video on uh, how to reflect across like that. But the, I want you to use this graph to see that there is a relationship across um, all of these quadrants. And you can go from the second quadrant to this would be the second quadrant in the next period. And it just kind of brings it all together very nicely. So with that, you have 
uh, the answers to all three of your questions using uh, quite a bit of color and a little bit of animation.